Thank you, Dr. Barra and Mikey Member Lucas. Um, this emergent coronavirus virus epidemic is a top concern for Oregonians, um, and I'm glad we're having this hearing today. In Oregon, we currently have three individuals who have tested positive, two of whom are in the district I represent. Plus, I have an additional couple of constituents still in Japan who had been on the cruise ship there. We know further community transmission uh, is likely. It's clear from the tragic deaths in Washington how this virus can spread quickly and cause serious harm. And so let's take a moment to reflect on uh, those who have lost their lives in our neighboring states uh, of Washington. And now we understand there's a reported death in California as well. Um, all the affected friends and family of, of those people. We need to take this seriously. I also want to recognize the tireless efforts of our public health officials um, in Oregon and the Pacific Northwest and across the country. I know they've been working around the clock to coordinate our response. I've, over the past several days, I've spoken with our Governor Kate Brown and many state and county public health officials and school superintendents. We had a school closed in Oregon for a couple of days, healthcare providers, and everyone has emphasized the need for robust funding. And I'm glad we passed the bill with strong bipartisan support in the House here yesterday. I hope they get it over the finish line soon in the Senate. But I've also heard uh, numerous concerns about the availability of protective equipment, particularly masks, also staffing challenges and testing capability. And we know those infected with COVID-19 can remain asymptomatic for several weeks. So healthcare professionals, as Dr. Hotez was talking about, are at even greater risk. There are furloughed healthcare workers in my district. Um, the CDC just expanded its guidance for testing, but there's still a significant amount of confusion about who should get tested and how those increasing testing capabilities can best be used to inform and improve our response efforts. And we heard this morning, you know, South Korea is testing 15,000 people a day. Um, Dr. Brownstein and Dr. Hotez, we can't get an accurate picture of the infection if we're not testing, but until recently the testing was limited to those who had recently traveled to places with high rates or those showing symptoms after close contact. So um, I understand the process of getting the tests out into the field is slow. We had the, the, the test um, sent to the CDC the, the, on, on Friday, and then it didn't come back till Tuesday, and that's really hard for a community that's wondering what's happening. So can you explain whether the scope of the CDC's guidance, was that based on best practices, or was it inappropriately limited because of lack of capacity to test, and who should be tested, Dr. Brownstein and Dr. Hotez? Of course, it's hard to, to, to delve too deep into what was happening at the CDC at the time, but of course, um, increasing testing is incredibly important. We know that this is a mild condition. Oftentimes, people might be feeling symptoms. They may not even be interacting with a healthcare provider, and so we don't actually know the full scope of numbers of cases that are out there. And I think you mentioned a really great point about the impact on the health system. Um, we are really advocating for opportunities to bring concepts like telemedicine and tools that help at the front line be beyond the point where someone actually has to come in and end up in an emergency, emergency department. There's opportunities to think about tools that actually provide symptom checkers that integrate data from the CDC, but also have virtual visits with providers. This is a real important component because Absolutely. what we expect is an influx of people coming in to our health system. I work in a health system. We are very nervous about the flooding of our emergency departments with potential cases. So the opportunities to bring digital tools and innovative solutions along with the ability to integrate with testing, so home-based testing, other opportunities are really things that we advocate for because of the fact that again, mild illness, lack of, in, of, of, of opportunities for someone to, to come and meet with someone live, and for the fact that we can actually begin to understand the depth of what's happening in the population. Again, those kind of data points are so critical now to understanding Absolutely. the features of this of epidemic and to understand more broadly what's happening in the community. Thank you, Dr. Hotez. As I mentioned, the, the test was presumptive on Friday, sent to the CDC, but it didn't come back till Tuesday. Can you elaborate on some ideas? Why have we seen such delays in testing? Do you think this recent emergency use authorization uh, will expedite things? And what else can we do to increase the availability and accelerate the, te the testing? So uh, there are four, four brief points are, are around that, and thank you for that question. I think the first is, uh, testing for respiratory viruses is not trivial because you get a, often uh, times, and we've been seeing this in China, and this is actually not unusual, if you look at the literature on testing for respiratory viruses, you get a negative result, a negative result, negative result, you put the person out of quarantine, all of a sudden they're positive. 
what does that mean? Is it, a, is it a true false negative, or is it because the test isn't sensitive enough? So it takes time to really fine tune these diagnostic tests for respiratory viruses. And in fairness to the CDC, testing, uh, developing a new diagnostic test, just like developing a vaccine in the middle of a public health crisis, developing new technologies for a new agent in a public health crisis is one of the hardest things that we do as a nation. So, so this, so it, and it's hard to make that go quickly. I understand we could have done better, the, we should have done better as a country of getting those kits out there. I think we will get up to a million eventually as, uh, as I believe uh, the Vice President mentioned. But until we do that, I think we've got to prioritize who gets tested. And my recommendation would be that we focus the testing strategically around protecting our three most vulnerable populations that I mentioned, our older residents and, and nursing homes and uh, places of assisted living. They're highly vulnerable. The mortality among them is 10 to 15 percent. Uh, healthcare providers, those who interact with the healthcare providers, and protecting our first responders, because if they go down, then, then again, everything uh, collapses. Uh, but then, even after that, I think the other thing that not a lot of people are talking about, even then, is this is not adequate, right? If we have to wait hours or days for the test result, it's, it's of limited use to us. What we need is like what we have now for a rapid flu test. We need to get a, a rapid test for that. Thank you. I, my time's long expired. I yield back.